Hey everyone, Tankenstein here. If you guys don't know or if you've lived under a rock over the last few days, the War Thunder economy has been a huge source of contention to the point where I don't think I've ever seen anything like this in War Thunder's history. In my 10 plus years of playing this game, I don't remember a single time ever being like this. So that being said, I think we need a unified voice in what we want from War Thunder, in what we need from War Thunder in order to continue playing. Again, this is the most unified I've ever seen the community in demanding action from Gaijin regarding War Thunder. Yet, I haven't seen a specific set of fixes that the players want. I recently saw a post from Dollar Plays that I thought summed it up actually pretty well. So I'll go over that post and I'll also add a few things of my own. We need a specific list of fixes that we can provide to Gaijin, otherwise they'll just claim that we want everything under the sun when there are really just specific things that can be changed in order to bring a massive improvement to the game, its economy, and to how the player views it. First and foremost, a flat SL and RP increase. We need something like that in War Thunder. I'm not entirely sure how much. Even something relatively small can be very, very helpful and would be extremely beneficial to the average player. Dollar player Plays said that we need a significant increase. I'm not sure exactly what would be significant, but I would say something on the order of 5 or 10%. That would be huge towards helping the average player in order to grind through tech trees with any level of regularity. Second, we need to put further incentives on Battle Pass, such as a 1-2% to 2 increase per time that you purchase Battle Pass that permanently stays on your account. Kind of like a mini premium time, but it's like 1 or 2% RP and SL bonuses up to maybe like five purchases of Battle Pass. So again, nothing all too major, but if you got a 5% overall increase in RP and SL just because you purchased Battle Pass five times, that would be fantastic. It's not enough to break the game, but it's like, hey, you've paid however many dollars into War Thunder. Here's a small token of our appreciation. Second, speaking of appreciation, incentives for logging in for months or years in a row. We should really consider giving people some premium time or even better yet, a unique vehicle that can only be given for logging in for however many days in a row or at your X or Y year anniversary. That would bring massive incentives to logging in continuously. I made a video about a year ago showing my 1000th consecutive login, which in and of itself was a mini miracle in that I had to contend with hurricanes, moving about 600 miles, emergencies, and so forth, and I only got something like an extra RP booster. Even if it's just a somewhat unique version of a plane or whatever the case may be, that would be totally rad and would really show that you actually appreciate your players rather than have contempt for people, which I choose not to believe that Gaijin has contempt for its player base, but some people, actually quite a few people, believe that. And again, this would go a huge way towards showing, hey, you don't. Fourth, add new game modes, such as the PvE mode that was mentioned years ago, as well as what we have in Naval. As Dollar Plays said, there are so many game modes that could be added into War Thunder that are simply not being added for one reason or another. I like how they're adding those new Battleship Island things in Naval. That's really, really cool. But continue with it, you know? I mean, Naval is just kind of a dead game mode, unfortunately. And I play it, you know? I really like Naval, but no one plays it because it's kind of a dead game mode. You just kind of line up, shoot at each other, and do it three times, and that's it. Fifth, reduced vehicle repair costs. I get it. Some vehicles might be better than other vehicles at a certain BR, but there are better ways of dealing with it other than increasing the repair cost of that vehicle. If you decompress BRs even further than what they are now, this would help to alleviate the issues of balancing via repair cost. And repair costs are one of the main things killing the average player. Beyond this, revert the changes from a year or so ago when win bonuses were nerfed in favor of having somewhat higher loss bonuses after a match. This, on the whole, has negatively impacted the community, as the average win rate is a touch over 50%. Further, this would help to incentivize people to play beyond one or even two deaths if they have more vehicles, as their rewards would be higher for actually participating. Beyond this, in conjunction with the repair cost point, reducing repair costs would also reduce the problem of people leaving early, especially in top tier. Why would I want to play, as Dollar Plays had pointed out, an expensive vehicle, like the Sharn Horse, when it costs a ridiculous amount of SL to repair? Meaning that oftentimes you need thousands of score just to break even if you die, and that's with premium time. Seventh, bring back the score rewards that you earn for being near the enemy, which is also quite frankly known as being near combat. It used to be a huge source of score and also considered to be player participation if you were near the enemy or if you were angling or whatever the case may be. Now it's even tougher to get player participation per match, which means that it's difficult to get tasks done and everything.
everything else under the sun, it was a very negative change that negatively impacted the average player by a pretty decent margin. Eighth, if you are going to insist on having SL crates in-game, such as the demolition crates, summer crates, wherever they are, at least increase the win rates of vehicles by some degree. Even if you increase these win rates marginally, it'll make a noticeable difference amongst the entire player base. Ninth, bring back Golden Eagle wagers. These were huge, though they were removed years ago, even bringing them back as an even rarer drop than they were before would be a huge sign of goodwill. You used to get those every now and again with those giant login rewards that you could get every few days or whatever. Even if you brought it back for every hundred days or something like that, or even every thousand days, that would still be really, really cool. Or like an ultra rare post-match loot box, that would be radical for what I believe is now the 10th point. Bring back double experience for the first match of each day. I remember years and years ago when that was a thing, and well before I was a YouTuber, I would log in and play just to get those matches done, and I would continue to play. That was actually one of my biggest incentives to play a match in all different countries, which would also help to get a lot of countries like Italy, Israel, France, some of the lesser played countries really into the mainstream because people realize, wow, these are some really fun vehicles. If you give people a specific incentive for playing a country, even if it was a rolling double experience thing, like every day of the week, you had a different country that had a first match with double or five times experience, like how it actually used to be even farther back, that would give people a great incentive to try out new countries. For the 11th point, make battle passes more worth it. There's been a huge and noticeable drop in the worth since battle pass began, going from four to three vehicles in each season, with one of those vehicle rewards being replaced with 10 days of premium time, give or take around 10 days. Further, they have become lower ranking, meaning that you can research fewer vehicles with the vehicles that you get from battle pass, and they've also become copy paste. We've thus far gotten like what? Two Mustangs. We have a BF 109 F4, which is just an Italian BF 109 F4. We have the Centurion, but we've got two Battle Pass Centurions now in the British Ground Tech Tree? That's ridiculous. Why would anybody want to play that? And again, if we were to also put in an incentive like a 1-2% to increase in RP and SL by buying Battle Pass, that would be tremendous. And as a side note, and I've mentioned this numerous times before, Gaijin looks at it where if you give something to the players, you also have to take something away. Typically, it tends to be about one step forward, one and a half or even two steps back for the player. Every single time Gaijin gives us something, they take one or two things away, which is terrible. That's a terrible way to conduct business with your player base. And though admittedly, I don't really think anybody outside of the heads of Gaijin really know the economics of the community and the game itself because they know all the financials, it would not impact, I am sure of it, it would not impact you guys if you just did something out of the goodness of your heart for the player base, even if it was minor, without also in turn taking something away. And the final thing that I want to mention here in terms of a specific point is remove the soft cap on SL and RP after you score a certain amount of kills in ground battles. Now, I'm not entirely sure what that soft cap is, but I've heard some people mention it, including Fly Daily, or it's something like if you kill three or four people, after that you get diminishing returns on your kills, which is terrible. That is absolutely terrible. Why would anybody want to play after getting three or four kills if you die? You know, especially if it's a high repair cost vehicle or something of that nature. Why would anyone want to do it? And that also contributes to the one death lever phenomenon. But either way, as I pointed out in my comments on my most recent video, every issue with the War Thunder economy is totally artificial. The economy that we have now is not by chance. It has been entirely planned to be this way by Gaijin in an attempt to force people to pay for or what used to be free. If you need any evidence of this, check out War Thunder Mobile's monetization. It is absurd and is likely how Gaijin would want War Thunder proper to be. And the thing is, most of the things mentioned in this video are things that we used to have, but have either been reduced or removed entirely in an attempt to force players to buy what they used to have normally. Gaijin is relying on the constantly renewing player base to either not know or remember how things used to be. But there are still plenty of people, such as myself, Ash, and many other old timers, that know how much better the War Thunder economy used to be. Gaijin has systematically removed many of the best features of the economy, 
in a haphazard attempt to make it more profitable for them, but in the long term, I am sure that it would end up hurting or even killing the game by turning people away from it. Right now, War Thunder is at a crossroads. Gaijin can either continue to gut the economy and end up with a game killed by greed, or they can do the right thing and bring it back to a state that somewhat resembles how it used to be in terms of the economy. And while I'm saying this, bear in mind, I am a huge proponent of Gaijin making money. I want them to make money. I want them to do well. These last few days, I've been reading stories of people taking literal years to grind through a single tech tree, which, if this is true of a relatively consistent player, that is an absurd notion and should not be how any game functions. Regardless, we need to stand unified as a player base. I'm not just a content creator, I am a player first and foremost. I love War Thunder and I love making videos about War Thunder, and truly, it pains me to do all of this, especially over the last few days because it could impact the game that I love, my relationship with Gaijin because I am a content creator partner, and quite frankly could also reduce my income due to fewer people playing War Thunder and thus watching my videos. Those risks are well worth it to me. But as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you all on the other side. Take care everyone.